it comes with a warning, in fact. Um, so basically, uh, yeah, so I'll tell you a little bit more about myself in a second. Before I do that, though, I just want to take a second and thank Linux Fest Northwest for uh, inviting me out here. The conference has been awesome. James Mason is really cool. He didn't pay me to say any of this. Um, and it's always a great time. So this is actually my second year coming back. I'm actually doing two talks today. This is the first one. Um, the second one kind of plays off of this just a little bit, but you can absolutely come to that and not miss anything catastrophic um, if, uh, you know, you bump into people who think I'm not terrible at speaking and want to recommend the second show. So, um, and the other person I really want to thank, I embarrass her every year we come here, uh, is my wife Shannon. Shannon is right here in the front row. Everybody wave and say hi to Shannon. Hi, Shannon. See, everybody actually listens. I like you guys. I have a monicum of power. Um, so if it wasn't for Shannon, um, I would not be here doing this. Uh, she is awesome. She is my roadie, my biggest fan. So I love to embarrass her at the beginning of all my talks so that everybody knows, um, depending on how angrily you want to mob me, beat me up, or whatever, my wife's right here, so she'll, she'll defend me. Um, but anyways. Maybe. It's, <laughs> Unless she offends you too. Yeah. Completely <laughs> accurate. Depends who she agrees with more. So, okay, so, enough with that. So Linux in a Microsoft world. I am so sorry to the person who's here from Microsoft today, but I couldn't help myself. Um, why? <laughs> why not was what I kept saying. Um, so, yeah. So uh, if you read anything about the talk, you know it has to do with um, integrating open source applications and uh, Office 365 and the like backends. So, before I get into that too much, uh, this is where I get to be a little selfish and narcissistic and tell you a little bit about me, okay? Um, so, I wrote this, actually, most of these points last year for a presentation I gave, actually, at the place I work, and um, they all thought it was funny. Um, so, I'm not going to read it you, because that really, really pisses off Shannon. So, I'll let you read that, and if there are any chuckles, great. If not, I completely didn't hit any of the right notes with you guys, and I'm sorry. Um, but the very first point I will say is to hammer home the point that titles in technology, I feel like, are almost wholly pointless. So you can tell me, you know, you're a 12th degree black belt in CentOS and you're a Linux ninja. Okay, that's great, but what the hell do you do every day, right? That doesn't help me understand what you do. So I'd much prefer, you know, grab lunch, grab a beer, Tell me what you do every day. That's much more interesting to me than, well, I'm a CTO of this interesting startup in what's not place. That doesn't tell me anything. So, uh, does anybody get the yak shaving reference? Right? Show of hands. Does anyone know what yak shaving is? No? No? Shaving a yak. What? No, you guys are killing me. No, uh, rep uh, doing a repetitive task over and over and over again, it was actually uh, made famous by uh, Ren and Stimpy back in the 90s, so I'm dating myself just slightly. Anyways, so, yeah, this is basically it. Oh, and I also uh, became a published author as of Thursday. So if anybody reads opensource.com, go look for my name. Hooray, again, this is me pimping myself. I'm sorry, I have to do it somewhere. So, enough of that crap. Messaging. So, obviously, we talk to people all day long. Oh, that guy's, like, staring at the door. He's like, can I come in? You can come in. It's... Really, I'm not Lunduke. It's, I, there's no fire marshal here. <laughs> Come on in. It's all good. Don't worry. I'm sorry. I'll try not to torment you too much. I was saying, I, I'm not a Lunduke talk. Don't worry. It's the fire marshal's not going to shut me down. Please come in. Enjoy it. Grab a seat. So messaging. So one of the things we do with people all day long is chat. Um, and a lot of times when it's a Microsoft environment, people love using Skype for business because they like pain. So because of that, um, um, I'm going to walk you through... Um, one of the best ways to do that with open source tools, right? So I already know some people are going to cringe. I already know some people are going to poke holes in things. That's okay. I'm not one of those speakers that says, hold your questions till the end. No. If you have a problem or if you'd like to talk about something that's up there, please yell at me. It's okay. I welcome this. So, so now you're going to notice most of these screenshots are from Solus because that's what I'm running today because last year Arch pissed me off um, and I had to use a backup laptop literally like 30 seconds before my talk, which is why poor Shannon here had to turn into a human tripod 
uh, and basically record the whole thing on my phone. So she really hates doing that. Her arms got really tired, but she's awesome. So I tried to make sure that wouldn't happen this year. So anyways, so Pigeon. Uh, Pigeon has been around for freaking ever. Most of you guys probably already know that. So the secret sauce that less people know about, about Pigeon is SIPE. The SIPE library is actually the protocol library that Office Communicator from way back when actually uses to send and receive all of the information, right? So if you have that, haha, <laughs> you have the master key. So that's kind of cool. So once you get that installed, which it's in every friggin' repository in the universe, um, even for, where was CentOS guy? CentOS guy? CentOS guy, it's in the repo. I checked for you, okay? Um, so once you get that installed, you'll be prompted with something that looks like this. Now, before everyone yells at me, I am taking the approach of the least common denominator. You're all probably much smarter people than I am, but I assume I'm showing this to like a second grader. So there's going to be a lot of visual aids and very little text for most of the stuff. So if that makes you cranky, I'm very sorry. Um, so you'll click on Add if you've never done that before. You'll select Office Communicator. Why? Because that's what it used to be called, you know, 87 names ago. Um, you're going to put in the name at company, right? Super duper simple. The rest of that, no one in the universe cares about and is there to confuse you. Because they could. Um, I have a question. Yes. So, great question. So, once again, to confuse the living crap out of you, um, you can click remember my password there and put your password there, or whenever we're, we, we go through the next few uh, steps here, once you go to log in the first time, it's going to prompt you for that information, right? And once again, it's going to ask you, hey, buddy, do you want to save your password? So, really, you can do that if you wish. Um, no one's going to cut your hands off. The only reason I don't show it up here is because, one, it's confusing, and two, it's going to punch you in the face for it no matter what anyways, um, at least the first time. That's the answer. Thank you. See, that was a good question. See, I'm not mean and evil. It's, it's okay. See, look, it's, it's not just because I live with her and she could poison me. Um, so on the next screen, the advanced tab, uh, auto, because, again, we don't care. Uh, user agent, <clears throat> that's a part of the black magic. If you Google for it, you can find user agents going all the way back to the very beginning um, to basically fake out and send to um, the actual server you're communicating with, which is kind of neat. So you can actually pose as, that one I believe is for uh, Office, or no, excuse me, uh, Skype for Business 2016 Basic, I think is that specific user agent. Um, but yeah, you can, you can masquerade as whatever you kind of feel like. That's the one I use every day. Hadn't broken yet. So I recommend that one. Um, but the reason that I put this in my slide is because, as you see, it's very long, and I hate typing. So I'll make sure whenever I post this, this will be in the comments, or rather the notes section, so you don't have to go look for that, because I hate typing. So I will make sure you guys see all that. Anyways... Uh, and you'll notice authentication schemas, auto the rest, blank, ignore, doesn't matter, there to confuse you. Global proxy settings, don't care, ignore it, I put it there for completeness sake. So, just a screen. Voice and video, use silent suppression, don't care, again, there for completeness, no one cares. So as you see, we've only actually touched a couple things, and actually, the one thing I didn't say out loud was, uh, the server, that's sitner.online.link.com colon four four three. Another piece of black magic that you have to go and guess um, and figure out. Yes, sir, in the back. Um, if you're using Office three or if your business is using Office three sixty five for Skype for business, then you need to leave a blank in the blog as well. You can, however, I have run into issues where sometimes it will not uh, basically sync and it'll actually stutter and be goofy. I actually started that way, and I got inconsistent results. Um, it was really weird. What, like, seemed like context? Yeah, meaning, so, like, whenever I would go to log in, it would time out. It would, it would give me, like, weird connection messages. It was just basically being really doofy. Um, I'm not quite sure why. I, I use all these stuff, and that happens. That's awesome. Uh, what, uh, what distro are you using? I'm curious. OpenSUSE Leap 42.3. So there you go. OpenSUSE Leap 42.3. Tested. Rock solid. There you go. Um, I was running on, um, 
I have a Dell uh, Precision 5510, please don't murder me, uh, where I work, where I have all this set up. Um, and I am running uh, Pop! OS. And for whatever reason, that was one of the places I ran into that goofiness. So what that server actually is, that's actually the fallback um, to that auto. And I'm just manually setting it to that failback server and basically saying, okay, I'm not going to trust you to not be drunk, so just do that. Um, I, I spent so much time on this that my boss would probably murder me. Um, so, sorry, Brian. Um, no, but uh, Serious Face, yeah, I actually did find, um, like, obscure forums that had this, and they actually had, like, three or four other ones. This one actually worked. Um, so that's part of the reason I listed that. And I saw it was kind of like the official failback one, uh, server that is. Excellent question. Um, any other questions before I move on? Yes, sir. Uh, my company uses Microsoft Teams instead of Skype for business. I'm sorry. Any, yeah. I'm, 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 actually, <laughs> don't worry. I'm coming to Teams later. Go oh, ahead. good. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, uh, so, so you're stuck using Teams? Mm -hmm. I'm, really, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but, um, but anyways, we'll actually get into why later. So uh, I'm going to move on just slightly here. Okay, so guys, that's messaging in a nutshell. So uh, the real question then is, um, what can and can't you do with that? And before I move on, I want to touch on that. So you can, if your boss or buddies on your team want to pull you into a chat, no problem. It pops up. just comes up as chat window one. Bang, you're ready to rock and roll like any other chat that you're going to get. Okay. Um, one other thing I want to touch on, there are plugin, third-party plugins for Pigeon. One of them is actually a GNOME keyring plugin, and there are other ones outside of GNOME, even for Windows that in essence uses um, GNOME's keyring to encrypt your password so it's not sitting in a plain text file. Please God do that. Um, that's just smart. Um, there are a lot of messaging clients that don't do a great job with handling stuff like that. They at least saw that and at least made a plugin for it. So just so you know, and actually when my article uh, at opensource.com went up, somebody was basically flambeing me over a friggin' open fire because I didn't put that up and I'm like, Time out. Calm down. It's okay. Actually, somebody else who knew actually said it for me, and I'm like, oh, I don't even have to respond to this one. This is great. So please keep that in mind. Um, so the only things you can't do are screen sharing, um, no worky, and joining voice and video calls, no worky. Um, but everything else works. So it's not quite a full solution, but it's pretty darn close. Um, I also found out somebody had posted the other day in that article that I wrote that um, they must work on the actual um, libpurple and Skype libraries, and they mentioned they're actually working on um, screen sharing support and the like for Skype for Business. So that's actually almost done, which I nearly weed myself, because I'm like, this is actually what I want. This is the only piece that keeps people from doing what I'd like them to do. So that's also coming. So anyways, I just wanted to touch on a couple of those things. Um, the only other thing that gets a little weird is if you do contact searching, um, you may have to search by their email address. Sometimes, again, um, Pigeon will get, get a little drunk and not find their name. I'm not quite sure why. I think really that has to do with how your Office 365 admins have set up users. So really, I think it's a data issue, not a protocol issue. Just something to call out. Email. Okay, so this is the like Diet Coke version of the one that's coming at 145. So I'm going to give you an email client, not all of them, just so you know. So we're going to start with Evolution. And when you get Evolution, you need to get the Exchange Web Services Library. Why? That's part of the secret sauce, just like the Sipe Library. Um, that is what, in essence, allows you to talk and communicate with Office 365. Um, it basically lets you speak Microsoft Eats, um, which is kind of cool. Um, so once you get those two libraries, um, you're almost ready to rock and roll. So on from there, if you have a GNOME-based distribution, this should look very, very similar, or budgie, um, or pop. So this is just the online accounts tab, uh, and in online accounts is the Microsoft Exchange button. Um, and if anybody wants to take pictures or anything like that, let me know. I will hang out and, and, and let you guys do whatever you want to do. That's no problem. 
Okay, so now that we got um, Evolution, we got the EWS library, um, we hopped over to online accounts, let's finish setting that up. So name it company.com, uh, super secret, hello kitty password, and uh, custom, you know, uh, down at the bottom, you need to put in outlook.office365.com. Again, piece of black magic, because most people don't know what the hell to put in the field. Um, well, you know. If you're not running 365. Uh, if you are not running 365, that will be the name of the exchange server at your business. Um, if you have multiples, no biggie, you know, buy the IT guy lunch, he'll give you one. Um, or whatever, uh, if you're stuck running Windows, I'm sorry, um, you can also go and find whatever server you're connecting to there and kind of like work your way around it in case you got a grumpy IT guy. Um, but really, I find, you know, alcohol, food, whatever, IT guys, they'll hook you up. So, uh, there's that screen. Okay, so from there, this is what it looks like right after you get everything done. So Microsoft Exchange, whatever the name of your full account is, you are now syncing mail, calendar, and contacts. So that's kind of friggin' awesome. So what that really means is, is that when you go into Evolution, you will be able to do real live queries um, for contacts in the global address book. You'll be able to get, receive, send, um, and update uh, calendar invitations. And that it basically bolts on GNOME Calendar, which is really groovy. And in addition to all that, your mail will work. Um, shocking, I know. Like, it all just kind of works at that point. So this is kind of, I'll call it the middle of the road mode. There are easier things. There are way harder things. Yes, sir. Does it support, like, the scheduling assistant and all that? Yes. It does. Yeah, it supports scheduling. I can look at people's calendars and see if they're free busy. I can, uh, I can uh, make people optional or required or various other settings. Um... Yeah, I mean, I haven't run into too many things. Now, there is one doofy thing I found, um, and it's kind of on the Microsoft side, not on the Evolution side, which is um, updating attendee status kind of gets a little weird. So there's a checkbox, and I don't have a screenshot of it, but there's a checkbox that says update attendee status whenever you're you know, getting a response for a invitation, right? Unfortunately, uh, even if you have that box unchecked, Apparently, it decides to alert everybody again. <laughs> and if you have a recurring meeting, it will alert them for every occurrence of that meeting that you might have for the next year. My boss was ready to kill me. It was a great day. Um, so there's that. Um, but I also saw in some Microsoft forums and whatnot, um, it's not an evolution-specific thing. It's something that they are uh, fixing, repairing, and in the process of addressing. So it's not really an evolution problem, it's just a, eh, we're working on a thing. So, so there's that. Okay, OneDrive! Kicking it in the face too. Um, I enjoy the OneDrive part because everybody's like, no, there's not a great way to actually do that. Lies, there actually is a great way to do that. Um, so I found a couple um, kind of gotchas for some of the other solutions. So one of them, it was some open source GitHub project that some guy somewhere had this going through a server that made me cringe and I didn't know what was going on and you had to like buy a commercial thing and no, time out, it's, no. So anyways, R clone. anybody heard of R clone? What, ah, guy in the corner, see, you heard of R clone. yeah, yeah R clone. So R clone is pretty cool. Um, it's in a lot of the repositories. Um, if it's not in your repository, if you go to rclone.org, um, you can either go to uh, grab it directly from there. You can also, I believe it's also on GitHub. I highly recommend grabbing the latest one uh, because uh, that'll come back in a minute, but there's a difference, subtle difference, between the business and personal OneDrive accounts. Um, the latest, greatest versions account for that. If you're more than two or three versions behind, you won't get the option you need. So just a heads up. It does. As a matter of fact, in some of these screenshots, you'll see, and some of these might be harder to see, but if you look, that gentleman is absolutely right. Uh, that's just nine of them, and I have a whole other screenshot lined up next that's more. 
I think it does almost 16 or 18 now, something like that. I think it was like 25 last I counted. It's a lot. Like, it's ridiculous. So this is kind of your, you know, master sword, if you will, to sync with all cloud stuff, right? It's kind of awesome. Um, now, I will tell you, it is a little command liney. So if that scares some people, um, don't wig out because their documentation is friggin' next to none. You can copy and paste your way to victory, which is a horrible thing nobody should do online when they don't know what it does, but you totally can. Um, so it's really, really cool. But as you see, once you basically get it uh, installed, you type our clone configure. It runs you through a wizard. Even though it's in a terminal that scares people, it's still a friggin' wizard. Like, it's not hard. Very, very cool. So you'll make the selection for, you'll notice number 10 there is Microsoft OneDrive. Um, and then from there... Choose a OneDrive account. That's the piece I was calling out a moment ago. You will not get the B and the P if you have an older version. Like I said, more than like two or three versions old, I think. So obviously, if you're doing it for work, hit the B. Um, from there, a lot of this stuff is kind of like, yes, yes, next, next, next type stuff, just to be fair. And it even says it right there. Though They even tell you in this wizard, eh, if you don't know, is it yes, it okay, it's fine. That's what most people do. So it's very, very helpful. And then at the tail end, just the very bottom that got cut off, that's basically what it's saying. Is this okay? Edit remote, this, that, and the other thing. One thing I want to jump back to, at the very top, it gives you the paths in specifying what that is. So the default just calls it remote. You can call that Flubby the Wonder Monkey if it made you happy. Okay? But that's ultimately where it's going to go and it's going to sink. So wherever you, whatever you name that, Whatever you shove there, going to rock and roll. Now, something else to call out is that there's not a great automated way um, baked into our clone to run this sync automatically. However, with all of the commands and all of the flags within probably, I'd say, five minutes of reading, you can actually set up a cron job or insert automated task here on any distro and run that at your own behest however often you want. So really, you've taken about three actions, and you kind of made it better than what they have already. Just saying. And you fully control everything, and how often that sinks. Kind of slick. So, let me just pop forward a little bit. So, let's see here. How am I doing on time? Ooh, I'm not doing bad for once. <gasps> Yay. Okay. Bonus round. Gentleman earlier was talking about Teams. Okay, let's talk about Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams, and no, there are no pictures. I'm really sorry. You're just going to have to hear me talk. I'm sorry. Um, Microsoft Teams is kind of like Microsoft's Slack competitor that isn't Slack yet. It's coming. So they have the idea of Teams. They have the idea of chats. And within those chats, you can favorite people. Okay, let me say that again. Teams, chats, favorites. Notice something I'm missing? There's no good way to add an email distribution for a whole friggin' team. That sucks. There's also not a great way to get rid of those chats. Yet. They, you can, sort of, but it's very kludgy. Okay? So that's kind of a bummer. Um, you also can't really install it on Linux yet. There's a couple unofficial clients. They don't work very well. The notifications don't work right. You're taking what Microsoft Teams is an electron-based app, then you're shoving that in another electron wrapper. Or some other projects said, oh, I don't want to do that. That's electron inception. That's horrible. They basically shove the website, right, into an electron app. That's a lot of what electron apps are, right? So the problem is it suffers from a lot of those limitations. So for instance, if I have Chrome or, uh, Microsoft Teams open in a Chrome tab, and I'm committing sacrilege because Chrome, whatever, um, and I have a chat selected and I minimize it, I'll never see a notification because Chrome's dumb. And, it see, and because that chat's selected, it thinks I saw it. So it's dumb. So it won't tell me. And it also will not work with the native notifications built into whatever desktop environment you have because it's dumb. What if you can't use Chrome to work, but you have to do Teams? Same problem. 
So basically, if you have to use Teams and you are using Linux, you have to put it on a friggin' screen and stare at it because notifications don't work right, which sucks. What's that? Or run of Windows VM. Windows VM. <laughs> and depending on what kind of VM you're running, because depending on who's uh, playing the home game or messes with dev VMs for Windows, they also don't have the original site anymore that you can download all of the different versions of Windows. You get 10. Tough. If you don't have the media, tough. Sorry, 10 or die. That's pretty much where we're at. So that kind of sucks. Yes, sir? They're merging Skype into Teams. So... So, there's a roadmap, <laughs> and it not done yet, yeah. it not even close to done. Um, the interop, so I can see the presence of, if you're a Skype for Business user and you're a Teams user, just started rolling out, but it's not technically done yet, um, because my company doesn't have it, so until that happens, it's not done. Um, but um, there's just a lot of shortcomings that, even if you use the web version, you can't really overcome. Um, I can't, I can't do video and voice sharing. I can't share my screen. There's no way to just share my screen outside of a video call, even if I'm using the appropriate browser and clients. Um, they've already had major Electron issues where it will eat an entire CPU or more depending on how your VM's set up. So if I fire up Electron, my VM basically grinds to a halt. Um, there's just a lot, a lot of downsides and a lot of challenges to overcome. So it's still very beta when it comes to what we're using it for. We had a great issue at work where teams would actually conflict with our host ransomware prevention software. Yeah. And basically they would contingent against each other for RAM until this, the system and the swap file completely ate up all the RAM and the system would just lock up. Yeah. We still have that issue. <laughs> I mean, I mean that's what I mean, right? It's, so it's, it's frustrating and when, when I hear things like Microsoft loves open source and then I think of something like this it makes me sad because it's already Electron, it's in one of the most portable versions in the universe, and we still don't have it. Now I get it, there's basic functionality that I was kind of poking fun at a minute ago, they don't have yet. Like I don't have a real like way to you know, chat with buddies or add entire teams or efficiently manage my chats, but it also doesn't work on one of the most major platforms that they're supposedly having a love affair with right now. And for people like us, that really sucks, right? I want this to work because it will make my life better at work and I can still use Linux and that would make me very, very happy, right? And there's not a great screen share, share solution if you're Linux-based right now um, in any chat client. You're, stuck, you're either relegated to WebRTC solutions that may or may not work, depending on what you wanna talk about, right? Um, or you have to work for a company that's willing to work, you know, with something like Nextcloud, where it handles all that and abstracts it away from you, which is a great solution. But most of the people in this room, like me, probably don't have the authority to make that change, right? As much as we'd all like to. So, anyways, so that's a bit of my spiel on Teams. Um, so I'm not going to end on a depressing note. The good news is there's actually at least a member of Microsoft actually in this room today. And as a matter of fact, they were sent here specifically to see this talk. I've already actually talked to some of those individuals, and they're extremely interested in what doesn't work and how to make it work better. That, so I want to end it on a happier note, not a depressing note. So they clearly realize there's work to be done. They want the feedback and so that they can actually get the work. So that's actually kind of at least a little good news, right? But on that bombshell... Any questions? And I'm going to give you a quick summary at the end here. Any questions? I either riveted the hell out of you or I really bombed today. I'm not sure which. Uh, we'll see. Okay, so, he's fixing his hair. Yes, sir. So one of the downsides of, of using web-based, um, uh, you know, Outlook, um, Skype for Business, and, and Teams, I think you mentioned one of them is the lack of notification, but... Yep. For the Linux user, what would be the problem of having you know, one monitor committed to all of the web-based uh, Office 365 applications that my company is using to have it here so I can you know, uh, you know, work remotely and, sure. and participate, rather than worrying, you know, trying to get these um, 
uh, you know, like pigeon to talk to. Sure, sure. So for so for email and calendar, there's not a huge downside. Um, the only downside is the system resources you're using for whatever browser you decided to play with, right? Now, I will tell you, depending on the browser you're using, um, mail and calendar can be sluggish. It will do doofy things because it's running in your browser. So it's susceptible to the same problems you've seen of doofy websites, you know, occasionally across the web. So there's a little bit of that. But as far as, like, base functionality, you're good to go. Now, there's also a Skype piece that you can actually use if you log into that um, Outlook Online, in essence, um, the portal, the Office 365 portal. There is a Skype piece there. It has incredibly limited functionality. You get basically your unified presence, and you get kind of like hangouts, like pop-out chats when you're chatting to people. But there's no screen sharing. There's no, you can't even do group, excuse me, group chats, I don't believe, um, and a few other bits. So... It's kind of a less functional pigeon, sort of. Um, Teams, yeah, notifications is what kills it for me. Um, Whether I try and use it local or if it's online and the like. OneDrive, you can kind of use OneDrive, but if you're moving anything big, like anything over, I'd say, probably four or five gigs, um, the web interface will choke. I know I tried. Um, So that's part of the reason I brought up our clone. So can you function? Yes but you're in a very, very, very limited capacity for a lot of those things outside of, like, mail and calendar. Um, but, but, yes, you absolutely could do that depending on your workflow. Gentlemen with the horns, I did see you. What's the question? Um, I was just going to comment a bit on uh, the Skype in Outlook Web Access. Mm-hmm. You also don't have any history. Yes. That. Like That's a you post chat and excellent point. You, you can't see what anybody said. Yeah. And, actually, that's one piece. Actually, I'm really happy you said that. Actually, so, you repeat. What's that? Can you repeat for the recording? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. So basically the question was, um, you know, in the um, web version of Skype for Business, you also don't get um, persistent chat history, um, which is also very, very important, right? Whereas obviously if you have the app and whatnot, you'll have your conversation history and you can tie that right into Outlook and it's super duper nice for whenever your boss tells you you didn't tell him something. Hey, actually, last week, right after you had lunch and clearly too many drinks, um, you did say that. Um, so, no, but I'm really happy you brought that up because in Pigeon, even without um, the plugins and some of the other things I had mentioned, you actually get a chat log, either in HTML or plain text, of every chat that you had for, I think the max was like a couple megs, but we're talking chat, so we're talking K and bytes here, right? So, like, that's a lot of chats. So you're going to get a hell of a lot more persistent history than you would in any of those other offerings. So, did you have another question to say? No, sir. Okay. Um, yes, sir. This entire um, set of issues, do you think of them as interoperability? Like, what do you, how do you, so as a, say, junior Linux person myself who's considering mm-hmm. going that route, and then I have this whole set of deficits to overcome or that they may be overcome over time, mm-hmm. what is that? Uh, you, mm, depends. Ah, oh, there's a little Cross person in the room. I can't swear now. What? I'm sorry. Cross platform thing. I I would say it's a significant disconnect between um, supported platforms. Um, you know, Microsoft um, for many decades has not been a fan, right, of Linux, and at times has been a complete loggerheads said some kind of nasty things. Um, So it really hasn't been in their best interest to make things work well for us. And kind of at every turn, um, steps, subtle or otherwise, get taken to kind of make things work more crummy. Actually, at one point, uh, to your point, uh, if you uh, change your user agent to Windows and Chrome for the online bit that we were discussing a minute ago, it would actually work better. And it was proven, which is funny. Um, on purpose or not, that's not cool. Um, but to answer your, 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 directly answer your question, I would say this would fall into interoperability um, and supported platform issues, right? Because technically, Linux is not a supported platform for any of these things. Um, and never has been. And it's, there's never been any two ways about it. 
So we've kind of been, you know, for years and years and years trying to figure out ways around that. And without seeing things and having to re reverse engineer things, you don't always get the full piece of pie you want. So, but that said, that's part of the reason I wanted to do this talk and the talk I'm giving this later this afternoon, because finding information on all of this sucks. There is not a lot. And what you find on YouTube and things like that are ancient for old, old, old versions of this stuff. There is nothing current for Office 365 for any of the, any of the things that we talked about hardly. With the exception of the, the most well-documented one, I'd say, is probably Pigeon. Because everyone in the friggin' universe has used it for a million years. Because we haven't had a better solution. Um, for enterprise -y chats like that. Neckbeards, please don't murder me. I know IRC and things are a thing. Just <laughs> um, but any other questions? One of the questions, but there's like... You're next. I don't think Office 365 is necessarily like not targeting Linux. I, just, I think the environment for Office 365 is horribly in on Windows. If, just, if you try to use Outlook all day through the browser, it's miserable. Oh, I had to put it. I 100 percent agree with you. Yes. I request getting Outlook back on my computer because I was like, I can't, I can't deal with this. So, so the direction I wanted to go um, for a while because I, I actually was an early adopter of Teams. I looked at it over a year ago um, before any of this like new cool stuff was going on. Um, I was trying to. Uh, push them to shove as much of that functionality into Teams. Like, give me mail here. Give me meetings here. Give me my schedule here. Then I only have to have one app and I don't have to care anymore. I now have my Microsoft Hub that I can deal with that gives me all the notifications I want and I don't have to care if it's in a browser. I don't have to care if it supports my distro. I just have to care if it's a app image, if it's a snapper, if it's a flat pack, or if it's an insert thing here. Right? I just need to care it runs and doesn't ruin my system. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, I caught you while you were taking a bite. I'm no sorry. Problem. No problem. I hate um, when people do that to me. I just looked up, actually, our phone at this point supports 33 different destinations. See, so there you go, 33. I can't count. He's right, I'm wrong, because the Internet's smart. 33. They probably added some, like, two minutes ago. That's kind of fair. Like, every release, they're adding stuff, so it's kind of mm -hmm. cool. Um, so, so I'm going to give just a quick summary, and this is not cutting off questions, by the way. So, any more questions, please yell at me. So... At this point, we can now chat with our colleagues using Skype for Business via Pigeon. We get all our email and calendar invites or events using Evolution, and it's tied into Calendar. Um, we can now sync local files to OneDrive nearly any way we conceive of and automate that task with the things we just talked about. And it actually wasn't that hard. Finding the information was hard. But when you put it together like this, this is not that hard, right? So, any other questions, please? I'm available. Yes, sir. Do we know what Microsoft's stance is or, like, their thought process is on these issues? Like, I mean, I, I know you mentioned that somebody's here auditing the class, for example. But, <laughs> you know, yeah. you're curious as to what the issues are, but what is, does anybody know what Microsoft's um, position is about any of this? Not, not officially. Huh. Um... What, what I've seen through forums, what I've seen through um, issues I've raised and open uh, in the Teams forum and in various things like that, if you actually look for my name, actually, in the Microsoft Teams forum, you'll see some pretty funny, eclectically written posts that might get me in trouble later. Um, but there seems to be a prioritization issue where... When I originally put in some of those issues, because I was one of the first people to request um, a Linux native client for Teams. And at first, there wasn't a whole lot of backing. But it was on the roadmap. They were making it. So I feel like most of us in the community were kind of like, oh, cool, sweet, that's going to be a thing. We don't got to worry about this too much. And then five or six other issues rose to prominence of like many, many thousands of votes. And all of a sudden, the Linux client fell farther and farther and farther down that list. So um, we've gotten to a point where some of those big ticket items have been taken care of. Um, but now, all of a sudden, magically, the Teams client is now um, in the backlog. So it's in limbo, which kind of sucks. But, but to directly answer your question, I don't know their official stance, but from what I've seen, 
Um, they seem interested in feedback, but I don't know if the right people are pushing the right buttons to make those things happen. And I think that might be the real problem. So I'll, I'll just say I'm, I'm from Microsoft. Don't mob them! Don't mob them! I'm, I'm just kidding. Here, I'm not here auditing this presentation. I've come here for the last several years on my own dime, out of my own passion, to learn more about Linux and, and use Linux. But when I heard about Ray's talk, I wanted to come in and, and build a channel to pigeon this back to Redmond to, because I, I know the right people to talk to. Thank you. Thank you. See, this is awesome. We're building <laughs> bridges, right? You know, people from Microsoft are here at the conference, and they're not, like, you know, here with, like, torches and spears. That's awesome. They're here to talk to us and learn things. So that's awesome. Um, yes, sir? So on our phone, have you had any issues dealing with, like, the SharePoint integration to OneDrive? Does that work? That's actually a great question. I don't know if I've messed with that yet. It's a great question. Um, the answer is it should, um, but I don't know if I've tested it yet. That's a great question. He works like I do in a very SharePoint-driven environment. Yeah, I, mean, I, I was just going to say, it's just like, just like other multi-bajillion dollar companies my wife may or may not work for. Um, yeah, they heart SharePoint. However, to be fair, uh, in over a decade of working in mixed environments, but pretty much all of them had Windows in it, I've never seen SharePoint implemented right once. Not once. <laughs> not once. Um, yeah, anyways. Um, any other questions? All right. Guys, have a great day. Uh, thank you again for everyone coming out. Really appreciate it. And uh, thank Brian for carrying our message back home. Thanks, guys.